Now, let's suppose that we have a homogeneous system of vector differential equations, and that our coefficient matrix is made up of only constants. So that we have a, so that's it. We've got a coefficient matrix made up of only constants. So what we want to do is we want to be able to now go out and find a kind of a shorter way to solve for the solutions to our system. So our system is going to look like this, right? It's going to be x prime equals ax. Okay, so x prime equals ax. And the question is, is like, what are the vectors x that will solve this? Now, a is made up, right? A is a constant coefficient matrix. So like A is, say for example, we've got something like the example that we have here is one, two, two, negative two, okay? And if you kind of think about it, if we multiply that by x1, x2, okay? We're gonna get something that looks like x1 plus two x2, okay? And we'll get two x1 minus two x2, and that'll equal x1 prime, and that'll be equal to x2 prime. And the question is, is like, what should x1 prime be looking like and what should x2 prime be looking like? Well, these are constants, okay? These are constants. And so if you kind of think back to the work that we did in higher order differential equations, if we had constant coefficients, our solutions all looked like of the form, right? Basically um, e to the uh, RT, right? Okay, so we'd end up with x equals e to the RT because Basically, when you take the derivative of e to the rt, if we have x prime, excuse me, if x equals e to the rt, then x prime is gonna equal r e to the rt, right? We're gonna end up with a constant in front of whatever the function is. So it makes sense, right? Our solutions should be of the form, they should be of the form x, equals e to the rt of some sort or another, okay? And you actually, by the way, you should have seen that inside of our last section when you're going through and solving, um, solving those systems. What we wanna do is we just wanna simplify this process. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna suggest that if lambda is an eigenvalue for a and um, v is an eigenvector, then e to the lambda t times v is going to equal my solution x, or a solution x. And then we'll have, for each and every one of my eigenvectors, I will end up having a solution, okay? So like, for example, if we take this a here, okay, and we find the eigenvectors of A. All right. Lambda is going to equal negative 3. And we'll have lambda equal to 2. And so that's lambda 1. That's lambda 2. Um, so we've got two of them. That's great because this is a 2 by 2 matrix. So this is a non-defective matrix. And we have an associated eigenvector V equal to 1, negative 2. So that's our V1, and we'll have a V2 equal to 1, 1 half. So what this suggests is that my solution X, my total solution is gonna equal E to the negative three T, one negative two, excuse me, C1, times E to the negative three T, one negative two, plus C2 E to the two T, one, one half. And this makes a lot of sense if you kind of think about it, okay? This is gonna end up making a lot of sense. And here's why. Let's say, for example, we have a coefficient matrix um, A, okay? All right, and, um, I suppose. and we have that uh, lambda is an eigenvalue with V being its associated eigenvector, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna suppose, or right, we're gonna postulate, we're gonna suppose the solution to ax equals x prime, okay, is e to the lambda t v, okay? So if I come in here and I'm saying, okay, so that's the case, we're gonna take, um, we'll take a, 
times e to the lambda tv, okay? And that's gonna then equal, it'll be e to the lambda t, okay? We'll pull the, the function out and then av. Since um, v is an eigenvector, it's gonna be e to the lambda t lambda v, okay? Which ends up just being lambda e to the lambda t v. Now v is a set of constants, right? It's an eigenvector, so it's a set of constants. And we know the derivative to e to the lambda t. So if I take e to the lambda t v, okay, which was my supposed or my suggested uh, solution vector, that's gonna end up equaling, and I, I take its derivative, that'll be lambda e to the lambda t v. And what we can see is that the two of these are actually the same. They are equal. And since they are equal, that means that this, in fact, is the solution to our differential equation. Okay? That's the solution. So what that's going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to say, okay, you know what? I now have a solution, one solution to my, my system. How many am I going to need? Well, since A is 2 by 2, right, I'm going to need two solutions. Right? I'm going to need x1, I'm going to need x2, but it appears that I actually would have two of them in this case because what I have is I have one eigenvector, uh, I have two unique eigenvalues and two unique eigenvectors. Those will end up being my actual solutions. Okay, We're going to be looking at non-defective matrices. So since we're looking at non-defective matrices, and those are n by n, what we know is we're gonna have n different eigenvectors. We may not have n different eigenvalues, that's okay, but we are gonna have n different eigenvectors. And since we have n different eigenvectors, that's actually gonna mean that we're going to have n different solutions. So all of our eigenvalue eigenvector combinations are going to be the solutions to our systems, okay? So basically what this is saying is, is that we're going to go out, we're going to find our solutions by finding the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of A. Okay, so one, find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of A. And then two, x prime equal to, and they'll call the c1 e to the lambda 1 v1 plus c2 e to the lambda 2 v2 plus dot 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 cn e to the lambda n vn is the solution to the system. And that's because we're working with non-defective matrices. So let's say we want to solve AX equals X prime. And A is given as this coefficient matrix 1, negative 2, negative 2, negative 1. When I find my eigenvectors, I end up with lambda 1 equals um, square root of 5. And it's got an associated uh, eigenvector V1 equal to negative 1 minus root 5, 2. And then I also have a lambda two, which equals negative root five, okay? And it's got an associated eigenvector V two equal to negative one plus root five, two. So my solution then is gonna be X equals C one E to the square root of five times negative one minus root five, two, and plus C two E to the root five, e, uh, excuse me, times negative one plus root five, two. And that's it. And we are done. If we wanted to, we could actually get an initial condition, go solve for C1 and C2. Two initial conditions actually is what we need. All right, but there you go. Let's take a look at another example. In this case, what we have, we have a non-defective matrix and we actually have unique eigenvalues. What happens when we have, say for example, repeated or multiple eigenvalues? So now let's suppose I want to solve AX equals X prime here. I have A equals negative one, one, uh, negative one, zero, zero, one, five, negative one, one, six, negative two. Well, in this case, I end up with lambda one is going to equal negative one, but it has an algebraic multiplicity of two. It does, however, have two associated eigenvectors. It has negative six, one, zero, and one, zero, one. Then I have a lambda two, which equals four, and that has an associated eigenvector of zero, uh, one, one. 
And that's my, we'll call that is it V2? That's V3. Well, it turns out that it doesn't actually change anything. We're just going to make sure that our associated eigenvalue goes with an eigenvector. And it doesn't matter how many times we repeat that eigen, eigenvalue, as long as we have unique eigenvectors to go with it. Because the unique eigenvectors make the overall solutions linearly independent, right? We're not going to end up, they're not on the same line of vectors because the coefficients here are all different. So consequently, we end up with non, we end up with linearly independent vectors. We can just, you know, basically um, construct our, our solutions just the same way as we did before. So we're going to end up with x is going to equal c1 e to the negative t. Let's do negative 6, 1, 0, plus c2 e to the negative t, 1, 0, 1, plus c3 e to the 4t, 0, 1, 1. And that's our solution. Nice, right? So now we get to the last uh, example, and that's using complex eigenvalues. So let's suppose that we have ax equals x, uh, x prime. We want to solve that. We have a equals 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 5. I go in, I'm going to solve, I'm going to find my eigenvalues, and I've got my first one, lambda 1, is going to be plus or minus i. Remember, we can kind of treat them as the same one. And we're going to get um, one of the eigenvectors for that one. It's going to have actually have two, but we only need to use one. I'm going to have it be i, 1, 0. So that's going to end up being my eigenvector, all right, that I'm going to utilize here. So I just want to utilize, I'm going to choose one. And what I'm going to do is remember that e to the i, right? I'm going to imagine this e to the i t, okay? And so it'll be e to the i t times co i, 1, 0. Now, if you remember, we can actually rewrite e to the i t, and we can rewrite that as cosine t plus i sine t, and then this will be i, 1, 0 times that, okay? And so those are going to be our two solutions, but we have a little bit more work that we've got to do with them. Nothing too terrible, just, just a little bit of work. So I've got, now I've got i times cosine, um, excuse me, I've got cosine t times i, 1, 0, plus i sine t times i, one, uh, 1, 0. I'm going to distribute in that i, okay? So I've got i, um, yeah, there it is. So I'm going to distribute in my i. So this is going to give me um, cosine t i one zero plus, and this will be i squared. So that's going to be negative one. So it's going to be sine t times negative one i zero. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to re rewrite this as an entire entire statement. I'm going to have it be, um, uh, and I'm going to group all of my real parts and my imaginary parts. So I'm going to get here, I'm going to get um, negative sine t plus i cosine t. I'm going to get um, cosine t plus i sine t. And then I'm going to get 0 plus 0. When I rewrite this, what that's going to give me then is I'm going to get a real part, which is going to be negative sine t, cosine t, 0, plus i times cosine t, sine t, 0. And that's going to be actually, that's going to be my solution. So what I did here is I said, okay, so I'm going to separate out my two vectors, okay, cosine t i plus i sine t, and then I have the i1 and 0. I combine my i's wherever I can. So in this case, that just makes that one i squared, and then I multiply through into the i here, so that I end up with cosine t and sine t as being essentially like my coefficients. Then I'm going to re-multiply back in. I'm going to re-multiply back in, and then I'm going to separate my, uh, my equations into a real part and an imaginary part. Then I'm going to pull out the i. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to drop off the i. The reason why I can do that is because what I can basically do is I can multiply this 
times its conjugate, which will allow me to just drop off the i because any linear combination of these two is gonna also be a solution. So consequently, this negative sine t cosine t zero plus cosine t sine t zero is also a, uh, also a solution. So we just drop off the i. Okay, cool, right? So there are the two solutions that I got for my complex values. I just need to now include in the other value that I have. The other one that I have, lambda equals five, and it's got V, we'll call it V3, equal to zero, zero, one. So that is my third eigenvalue, okay? So once I've done this process for changing my complex eigenvalue, um, and eigenvector into real ones, okay, and splitting them into the two that I need for my, basically my trig values, I can just add in the lambda equals five one as well. So my overall solution here is gonna be x equals, it'll be c1 negative sine t cosine t zero plus c2 cosine t sine t zero plus c3 e to the five t zero, zero, one, and it's done. That is the solution to our, our, our equation. So the complex ones take a little bit more work, but not a ton, and once you do it a couple of times, it's second nature, it gets very, very quick. Okay, so this completes uh, the, the lesson on how to find the so solutions to vector uh, homogeneous vector differential equations um, with uh, constant coefficients.